So one question I get asked quite a lot is, how am I able to switch between all different tunings? Um, or, you know, how, how do you memorize all these different tunings and not get confused and, um, and end up messing up, um, forgetting which tuning you're on? So, um, I've worked out there's about six different tunings that I use kind of regularly, and then I use occasionally some slight variations on each of those as well. Um, so the, the main tunings I use are Richter, obviously, um, Natural Minor, Country, Wild Tuning, which is probably the one I use the most these days, Wild Minor Tuning, um, and something that I call Wild Country as well. Um, so the main reason why I don't get kind of con confused when I'm switching between tunings is because I always know why I'm using a particular tuning. Um, I think if, if you don't really understand what you're doing and you just kind of buy some random alternate tuning and think you're just going to pick it up and, you know, let your muscle memory take over and just do what you usually do on a Richter harp on it, then it, it's probably not going to turn out too well. Um, but all of the tunings that I use are based off of Richter and are, are very closely related to Richter. So because I played Richter for for years, um, more than 10 years before I started using all these different tunings, um, it's really not that difficult for me to adapt. Um, I should also point out, you know, people think that if, if they have played Richter for a while, um, they think if they're going to make the you know make the switch to, to wild tuning or any other tuning, that they they have to now like fully commit to that and and then never be able to play Richter the same way again. Um, again, in my experience, that doesn't happen. Um, you, you don't lose what you already had. It just kind of opens up new doors. So um, let's start off by talking about country tuning because this is a very simple one. So country tuning is just one note different from Richter tuning. Um, just the five draw is raised a half step. So in second position, that means you get a major seven instead of a flat seven. So you wouldn't use this harp really for, for blues because in blues you always want the flat seven. So when you would want this is when you want to play the complete major scale, you want to play major scale melodies but you want them laid out in second position, so you still have that that kind of bluesy country expression that second position gives you, but you have your major seven there and draw five, uh, which is much more expressive than it being the five overblow, which it would be on Richter. So. When I'm playing country tuning, I'm I'm never gonna go wrong or like hit that note by mistake because I'm only gonna use this tuning in stuff that's that's in a major key. And so if if I was playing Richter in second position over something that's that's purely major, chances are I'm just gonna be avoiding the five draw because it's got a flat seven in it. So that's not the seven that we want. So, you know, probably if, if you play major in second position, you'll, you'll mostly just play the major pentatonic. <laughs> and you're just avoiding the five draw. So on, on country tuning, we've got the, the major seventh rather than the flat seventh that we want in the five draw. So you can still move around just playing major pentatonic, but when you want to get a little bit more major, or you want to you know, get a bit more melodic, you've got the option of putting that five drawer in there. So that, that's country tuning. It's a good kind of alternate tuning to start with because it's only one read different to Richter. Next let's talk about natural minor, which was the first alternate tuning that I ever used. So, 
again, this is very closely, you know, it's, it's based off of Richter. It's designed to be played in second position. I know some people do like to play them in other positions, but predominantly it's, it's designed to play in second, which is why most of the manufacturers label them in the second position key. So this one is labeled E minor, but really it's an, an A harp. You know, you use an A harp to play second position in E. So um, this is like an A harp, but the thirds and the sixths in the scale in second position have been flattened. So instead of a major third, you get a minor third, and instead of a major sixth, you get a minor sixth. So that means that the three draw is, is flattened to a minor third, um, and the, the two blow, five blow, Uh, a flattened to a, a minor six, and you know the, the same notes in the corresponding octaves. So the, the third in uh, seven draw is flattened, and the, the eight blow, which is a, a sixth, is, is flattened too. So again, your 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 thirds are still in the same places. They're still in three draw and seven draw. They're just the thirds that you want when you're playing minor. And your sixth is still in the same place. Still two blow, five blow, eight blow, but it's the minor sixth that you want when you're playing minor. So um, it, it just kind of, it, it makes sense, you know, it's not like something that's completely reimagined, it's just we're taking Richter and we're, we're flattening the notes that we want to flatten in order to get a certain scale. <laughs> So to play that natural minor scale, I'm, I'm really using the same uh, breath pattern and, and bending pattern as I would to play Mixolydian on a Richter harp. So, you know, if, if you're really good on, on Richter already, then it... it takes like a few minutes to, to get used to playing natural minor or, or get used to playing um, country because they're, they're based off of it, you know. Um, so let's talk about the wild tuning next. So wild tuning is, is a little bit different, um, although again it's, it's designed predominantly to play in, in second position. Um, the first five holes are the same as a regular harp. <laughs> Um, but then holes 6, 7 and 8 are just like a repeat of 2, 3 and 4. So anything you do in 2, 3 and 4, you can do in 6, 7 and 8. Um, and then hole 9 is just like hole 2 again. So you can think of 8 and 9 as being like 1 and 2. So everything is is familiar. It's all just the same as stuff you already do on on Richter. Um, the only hole that is a bit different is hole ten. Um, <laughs> hole ten, the reeds are, are reversed, so you know the, the blow bend is now a, a draw bend on wild tuning. Um, then we've got the wild minor tuning. So wild minor is to wild tuning what natural minor is to Richter tuning. So we just take the, when we're in second position on wild tuning, we take the thirds and the sixths and we just flatten them. So it becomes, you know. So we can get our complete minor scale and minor chords. Um, then there's a tuning that I, I like to call Wild Country, um, which isn't commercially available. It's, it's something that I use myself from time to time, um, which, as, as you probably guessed, is just wild tuning, but with the five draw raised. So you get all the expression that comes with wild tuning, um, the added expression in the upper octave, but... You know, you've got that major seventh in, in the five draw. 
And then the other tunings that I might use from time to time, sometimes depending on you know what what melody I'm playing, um, I I might feel like I want to use one of these tunings, but just tweak one of the notes. So sometimes I might use wild tuning, but just flatten the seven draw, like just the seven draw, or um, you know I might take wild minor and raise the five draw a semitone. Um, to make it harmonic minor because harmonic minor is just the same as natural minor but with a raised seventh. So I hope this helps somewhat. Um, I think you know the key thing to understand is just just really get your head around Richter first and then you know start start to branch out into tunings that are a, a bit similar to it like country or natural minor. Um, Again, wild tuning is, is based off of Richter. The upper octave is just like a, a repeat of the lower octave. Um, so they're, they're all related. You just need to understand why it is that you're using a particular tuning. Um, and then it should all make sense to you. Hope you found this helpful. I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching. Cheers.